Hi, I've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Monday, the 6th of August. Here in the Atlantic, Florence has died and training dry air is expected. We'll move west-northwestward here, might recurve later, could possibly regenerate in the southwest Atlantic according to some models, but again, we'll focus on Florence later as she is no threat to land. The big focus is on Ernesto in the western Caribbean. And as we look at Ernesto, what a big change from last night. Last night, we saw a partially exposed surface center to the west of most of the deep convection to the east. This morning, the recon has gone in. Found that the center has jumped northeast under the deepest thunderstorms and is now directly underneath uh, this strong CDO that is developing. And the, the plane is found in eye of all things, only six numerical miles in diameter and a closed wall, uh, which is interesting, very tight eye trying to develop a near hurricane force winds. And the NHC position at 12Z from an hour and a half ago actually has this way back here to the southwest. The new position is off to the northeast. The actual movement isn't to the northeast. The center has just jumped underneath the new convection, which often happens in developing and rapidly strengthening storms. And uh, I say rapidly because Ernesto probably is beginning a period of rapid intensification. Pressure is now down to 994 millibars. And uh, we saw from the recon obes just a bit ago that we had 77 knot sustained flight level winds with an unflagged surface reading from SFMR of about 62 knots, two knots under hurricane strength. And uh, with a core this small and this tight, you can see the tight pressure falls here right near the center, but very small. Um, in terms of the width, um, a couple of millibars, three or four millibars more, and we'll probably have ourselves a hurricane. And uh, there was still some doubt yesterday that, er that Ernesto would start organizing quickly enough to become a hurricane before landfall, but it now appears it is taking full advantage of the pattern we discussed over the last few days uh, in this western Caribbean area, uh, where the slowing of the forward movement of the storm now is allowing it to strengthen in earnest. And you can see these popcorn showers now developing out to the west as wind shear abates and uh, mo moistening up the atmosphere in front of the storm's path. And we'll start to see this northwest part of the storm probably fill out today and tonight. And uh, we probably will have ourselves a strengthening hurricane, possibly even up to Cat 2 now, if it gets if it passes far enough north of Honduras, coming into the Yucatan if all trends continue. So this is taking full advantage of this dangerous pattern that we can still see here on the water vapor imagery with the upper low over the Gulf of Mexico backing off to the west-southwest. We have the other upper low to the northeast of the Bahamas, uh, bringing a northwest flow loft north of Ernesto. The upper low is bringing a ventilating southerly southwesterly flow to the northwest of the storm and allowing upper level ridging to start expanding over the western Caribbean as the cirrus shield starts to come away from the new CDO uh, over Ernesto's center. So this is a very conducive pattern uh, for rapid development and intensification as we warned could happen on approach to the Yucatan. So this is something that folks along the Yucatan coast should watch very closely, especially with the erratic relocations of the center right now as new convection develops. That could mean the difference in 50 to 100 miles for the landfall location. And with the core this small right now, uh, barring uh, any growth in size over the next uh, 24 to 36 hours, we could um, it makes all the difference in the world with the wind field of highest winds coming ashore. So folks here should be monitoring the situation closely. The good news for Honduras is that with a small core uh, moving farther north means that uh, hurricane force winds probably will not be felt there, especially since the southern side is the weakest side. But heavy rains and tropical storm conditions are likely in Honduras, and uh, the NHC track will likely have to adjust slightly northward in the short term as it moves across the Yucatan. Uh, but these are the models uh, that you can see here, most of which haven't initialized with the new data from the recon in terms of the position, but in general, the short-term track should be most affected. Probably still, I think, coming in near Chidumel, which is the landfall location I had yesterday. Um, but the long-term track continues to shift south on the other side of the Yucatan as it curves west underneath of the big Texas ridge, even farther south than I thought yesterday. Getting the storm north of Tampico now is probably going to be pretty difficult. Most of the models are very clustered uh, south of Tampico now. Now, and that's more than likely where this is going to go as it crosses the Yucatan. Regardless of how strong it is here at landfall, it's going to get knocked down a great deal uh, by uh, the crossing of the Yucatan. It will be quite weaker on the other side, but still, if it has enough time over water, could regenerate to close to hurricane status before making landfall on the other side. But if it comes in too far south, uh, probably will just be a tropical storm. But either way, it could still be a uh, a rather nasty situation for the Bay of Campeche coastline. So folks there should also be watching this. Uh, the 500 millibar m height map shows the philosophy for this track hasn't really changed. We have uh, a, the jet stream way off to the north here in southeast Canada. Not much of a big weakness over the Gulf of Mexico, but there is one, uh, albeit weak. So 
Ernesto will probably be gaining some latitude as it comes towards the Yucatan, but then the big uh, Texas ridge here uh, will catch this and bring it westward into Mexico, likely uh, not not going to be a United States problem anymore. Uh, Mexico and Belize and Honduras problem at this time. You can see some height fall starting to show up over the southeast U.S. as this short wave will start deepening this trough over the next few days. If Ernesto was hanging back for a couple more days, we would be talking about a bigger problem coming into the Gulf of Mexico, especially with the way it is starting to strengthen now. We are lucky here in the United States that this storm is uh, moving faster or was moving faster and is now too far west to catch this weakness in a way that it could have before um, again going to be a big problem for Mexico so we will be monitoring the situation closely and uh, updating you as things evolve all right that's it for today thanks for watching